keeps dominating the headlines when it comes to Europe's economy. But the story is bigger than that. It's about growth and getting jobs back to the people. So to discuss everything that matters to the economy, I caught up with Vice President of the European Commission in charge of growth, employment, competition and investment, Jürgen Katainen. How flexible is Europe actually in terms of policies? And it, Greece is a prime example in that question. There's only few countries who can afford to stimulate the economy. But the, better, the best stimulus what all the member states can do at the moment is to do reforms, which really change or reform the country in a way that makes it more flexible. When talking about labor market, or when talking about um, how easy business environment there is. So uh, the flexibility and the uh, stimulus means that we have to be ready to reform our societies and many governments are doing this. Would you say that Greece is not or would you say that maybe Europe is very slow to react and that the Eurogroup meetings, Troika meetings that end up going nowhere? Greece has achieved a lot of, uh, of good things. If looking at the primary surplus, it's one of the biggest in Europe. Also, the economic growth is very strong. But now, after the elections, the fundamentals in the economy have not changed. And the Eurogroup just took the first step this week and they will continue trying to find a solution which is acceptable to all 19 member states. So we have to accept the truth that the economy around Greece hasn't changed, even though the government has changed. We are really taking it down to the wire with Greece. Is that going to be the situation that we take our own time and the goalpost has moved too much? When it comes to European uh, decision making, we are delivering quite, delivering quite fast. Just a few months ago, we. Uh, said that we are going to establish a new investment triangle with a risk fund with the deepening single market and, and transparent project pipeline. And this is going on. During this spring, many of these pieces in a puzzle will be in place. But then when looking at the national reforms, it always takes some time. Because if you need to reform, do reforms which goes very deep uh, in your society. It is not easy politically, but also it always takes some time. What is a good compromise from your perspective on Greece that will hold water with the other countries that are looking at Syriza and worrying about their own internal political situations? Greece has been helped by the other European taxpayers. And it's clear that they have to continue to do growth-friendly reforms. Uh, right today, it's too early to say what will be the final outcome, but the Commission is very committed to help Greece. We have to make sure that uh, people can get their medicine and, and uh, healthcare treatment if needed. So we, we are on the side of Greek people. And there are 19 member states, 19 electorates, 19 governments and parliaments who must accept uh, to help program. And of course, uh, the most important thing is that the Greek government uh, is willing to cooperate. If the investment plan is based on growth-related bonds, why should Greece at the same time not really propose growth-related bonds? Greek authorities must make sure that confidence around the country will increase. It means that uh, they must show courage to do growth-friendly reforms. Also, they must take, take care of their fiscal policy, because otherwise no one will invest in Greece if the uncertainty grows as it has done during the last few weeks. But for instance, new fund, good finance projects, private sector projects increase also. It has been constructed in a way that it can take more risk, and that the, the surrounding and confidence must be in, in good level, otherwise nobody don't want to invest in Greece. The investment plan's been on a roadshow. What kind of reaction have you got from the investment community and how realistic is it? Well, the feedback has been very encouraging. First of all, we can deliver very fast. So everything should be in place by the end of June. And um, we can start um, increasing SME lending already before that. We don't know the projects yet. It, it depends on the private sector because the new fund will finance only private investment and public-private partnership. There has been some questions why we are using um, such a big number uh, or figure 
uh, when talking about leverage, but it bases on the historical data of EIP lending. Actually, times 15 is a little bit lower than ordinary EIP leverage, which has been. So nobody can guarantee this, but uh, nevertheless, it's the best uh, information we have at the moment. Of course, we are interested in to crowd in some resources from outside Europe also. And once everything is ready, I'm more than happy to, to visit different parts of the world. Do you think the ECB's quantitative easing program is making it easier for you to sell the investment plan? It has been very helpful and it has stabilized the situation. If looking at the monetary policy and if you add cheap euro and if you add cheap oil price, it they all together create a tremendous stimulus to euro area economy. My final question to you, Mr. Katainen, what keeps you up at night? Deflation, Greece, the lack of growth, the investment plan? Let's say investment plan because there are so much work to do. I'm not worried about um, deflationary spiral at the moment. I'm working very hard for uh, investment plan because it can make a change. It will not change the whole world, but anyway, it will help private investors to invest in Europe, invest in real uh, job creation projects all over Europe. On that note, sir, thank you very much for your time and thank you for watching.